there, this is Greg from Ryder. I'm in India for the Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650 launch. Basically the last day of the event. We spent the previous two days riding, gathering photos and video, uh, exploring a part of India that I've never been to. I've never been to this country at all. And we are in the Western state of Rajasthan. It's considered the princely state. Also uh, in the West, it's, it shares a border with Pakistan. So it is, um, you know, very dry and arid, has wide open spaces that are great for riding a cruiser. And so we put uh, about 450 kilometers or about 300 miles over two days. I had to do a lot of stops for, you know, photo passes and video passes and things like that. So that kind of slows things down. But boy, we were really uh, twisting the throttles pretty hard. We were riding 80 miles per hour pretty regularly. Uh, riding in India can be a, uh, a challenging experience. It's sort of like every ride is an adventure ride because there are cattle that wander around. Uh, there are herds of sheep and goats that move around. There are people on little motorcycles and scooters, uh, big trucks. People kind of come and uh, go as they please. They don't necessarily wait for you to let them in. They sort of put their self out there. And so uh, it's a lot of stuff. It's like uh, playing a game of Frogger on speed or something like that. So we got through it. It was fun. It was exciting, but it also gave us a, a kind of a durability test of the Super Meteor 650. You know, we rode on some really rough pavement, potholes, uh, speed bumps uh, that were pr hit pretty hard. And uh, you know, this is not a bike that got out of shape. It uh, really is a very solidly built motorcycle. It's comfortable. It accelerates really well, you know, given the size of the engine. It uh, has the appropriate amount of, of power and acceleration. It uh, has a nice rumbling feel. It, it's really great. What I want to do is walk around and show some of the features of this bike. Uh, let's start at the front. So the, the Super Meteor 650 rolls on a 19 inch front wheel. It's cast aluminum, uh, it's tubeless tires. Uh, it has a single disc brake uh, with a two piston Bieber, uh, Bieber caliper uh, that uh, provides actually quite good stopping power uh, given that it's a single disc brake. Uh, but it's paired with a matching uh, disc of the same size and caliper for the rear. So using both brakes together gives you optimum stopping power. Uh, also, uh, it is come standard with dual channel or basically ABS for front and rear wheels. Um, the fork is a 43 millimeter inverted show a big piston separate function fork. Uh, it offers no adjustability, but it does have 4.7 inches of suspension travel. Um, it's a really handsome fork that uh, resists flex. It really helps with front braking. Uh, it really gives the front end very stable feel with a wide handlebar like there is on this motorcycle. Uh, you know, whether it's low speed or high speed riding, it uh, was very responsive to steering inputs. So, um, also, the headlight is an all LED headlight. That's also a first for Royal Enfield. It has a LED taillight. Uh, it's got this handsome silver uh, satin finish bezel, as well as the aluminum fork yoke and some of the other components, the top tree, uh, the bar risers, all have a matching sat satin finish. And there's a satin finish on the switch gear. Uh, the mirrors have been removed off this bike. They're gonna package it up and ship it back to Chennai. So you can't see that it has uh, these models. I think this standard model would have uh, black mirrors, but the uh, some of the other models have chrome mirrors. The gauges are quite nice. There's a large analog speedometer and inset is a digital multifunction gauge that has things like fuel economy, uh, trip meters, odometer, clock, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, the small gauge on the right is Royal Enfield's tripper turn-by-turn -turn navigation system. So moving back from the bars, we've got a really gorgeous teardrop tank. It holds 4.1 gallons of gas. You can see this hand-done pinstripe uh, that is still done by a pair of brothers who have been doing hand striping in Royal Enfield's factory for many years. Uh, it's really gorgeous. Uh, you know, the finishes and color combinations on the Super Meteor were a big part of the design process. Uh, down below the engine, of course, is the parallel twin engine. Um, it is a very smooth, uh, responsive engine. It has a nice rumbling sound, uh, rumbling feel. 
but at high revs, it uh, runs quite smoothly. It's counterbalanced. Uh, we were running at 80 miles per hour for seemed like hours on end, and it was had a, you know a light tingle, but nothing that was bothersome. It really made you know that the engine was down there. It was doing its thing, but it was quite comfortable. Uh, linear throttle response, nice torque curve. It's again the numbers aren't big, but for a size of this motorcycle, which will typically be ridden by a solo person. It, uh, it was it was more than adequate. Uh, they've done so. There's a new intake system as well as a new exhaust. You can see the full uh, chrome exhaust. It's chrome on both sides. And so you can see some of the coloring and badging on the engine uh, is really to give it a very classic and premium look and feel. The seat is a wide dish seat uh, on the standard model it's 21.9 inches so uh, most riders should be able to comfortably sit on this seat uh, get both feet on the ground um, standard configuration has a small pillion pad uh, as well as passenger uh, uh, footrests um, you can also see in addition to the side stand there is a standard center stand for all of these uh, super meteor 650s it has chain final drive, so that can help with um, chain maintenance, oiling ma the chain, uh, uh, cleaning the chain, uh, tire removal if that needs to be done. And out back are two dual shocks. And these shocks have five-step preload adjustability, so you can tighten things up a bit. But the, the springs themselves are quite firm. Uh, I'm over 200 pounds and uh, we hit some speed bumps uh, really hard and some potholes really hard and I, I never felt like I bottomed it out. It felt like it was, it was compliant. And what's unusual, of course, is as a cruiser, uh, want a low profile look in the back. But I think this has a better balanced look than many cruisers and it has four inches of wheel travel in the rear, which is uh, adds to the comfort a lot. You know, if you're the kind of person who is going to uh, go riding a lot of miles in your cruiser, especially if you have a passenger, you would want to have um, uh, that additional suspension travel. India is a huge motorcycle market. They typically buy a lot smaller motorcycles, maybe 100 to 125 cc. 350 is considered a rather large motorcycle, but the Royal Enfield motorcycles are ones that are known for quality, premium finishes and build, uh, but there's also a growing interest in the middleweight segment. So having motorcycles that are larger, while a 650 may seem small by American standards, because most cruisers are quite a bit larger than that. Even the smallest Harley Evo Sportster was powered by an 883cc engine. So this is a motorcycle that is aimed to be accessible. So this is going to be a cruiser that somebody's going to want vintage style. It's going to be a little bit more of a relaxed riding position. It's not really aggressive in its styling. It's more classic in its styling. And, uh, you know, I've ridden the INT 650 and the Continental GT that share the same platform. Uh, they're absolutely enjoyable motorcycles to ride. Very accessible in terms of overall weight and seat height and so forth. So steering and, and wandering around on city streets or winding roads is a real pleasure on these bikes. So, um, yeah, India has been great. It's really a, a honor to be in the country of origin for a motorcycle, that these motorcycles, all of them are built in the southeastern coastal city of Chennai, which is kind of like the Detroit of India. Um, they have a huge modern factory. It's ISO certified. They have uh, thousands and thousands of people that work there uh, from both a manufacturing standpoint to a management standpoint and design. And then they have their design center in the UK and they work closely in to collaborate. They do very extensive uh, validation testing. Uh, they have rigs in their factory where they can do simulated bumpy roads and twists and turns and, and components being moved back and forth under a lot of stress that can basically replicate many miles. But it's really about the equivalent with all of their testing, about a million kilometers of testing went into the Super Meteor 650. And it really shows, uh, like I say, this is a motorcycle you get on, it's easy to ride. There's not a lot to figure out. It has ABS. That's the only electronic safety feature, absolutely critical, especially in an environment like this where you've got to get on the brakes quick sometimes and the roads can be dusty. It will get somebody 
connected with just the pure joy of riding a motorcycle. So we look forward to getting one at back home, doing a lot more testing. Uh, we'll find out what the pricing is gonna be on this motorcycle. Uh, availability also has not been determined yet. Uh, I think it's gonna be probably summer of 2023, but there's gonna be a wide range of colors available. We have a full genuine motorcycles accessories list of things available for these bikes so that people can customize them. And really the design of the bike is such that people can do a lot of custom work on them. So yeah, so thanks for watching and uh, look for a full review on ridermagazine.com. And uh, if you don't mind, go ahead and subscribe, leave us some comments. Thanks.